evaluate the trig functions. We'll use the calculator to do that and state the reference angle. So our reference angle will lie in the first quadrant. It would be a positive angle in that first quadrant uh, between 0 and 90. And then we're going to check if the reference angle produces the same output as the provided as the provided trig functions we are we are giving. So let's start by where can we find 195. Now the first thing I want us to recognize is let's think about that unit circle. So I'm going to draw a simple unit circle here. And so we have 90, 180, 270, and 360. And a reference angle is how far do we have to go up or down to get back to what we consider as this horizontal axis. So 195 is past 80. Now how far past 80 is it? Well, if this is 180 and this is 195, the difference, we're going to either go up or down to get back to this horizontal axis. The difference is 15. So it has a reference angle of 15 degrees. Now when I evaluate it, I'm going to first go to mode and make sure that I'm in degrees because I'm provided a degree. Then I'll do the sign of 195. This is my answer. I'm going to write this down. We have negative 0.2588. And we want to make sure that's the same as the sign of 15. And it is. Now here's the difference we need to talk about. Why is this answer positive and this answer negative? This is the correct answer, but why is one positive and one negative? The reason for that is that this angle of 195 lands in quadrant number three, all-star tree class. Only the tangents are positive. That's why the sign is negative as a final answer here when we evaluate. If we were going to find the sign of 15, that would land up here in quadrant one and everything is positive. That's why we see a difference of an answer in terms of positives and negatives. But this is the correct answer because it lands in quadrant number three. Let's look at the next one. So where do I find 140? Well, positive 140 is right about here. Positive 140 is right about here. It would be 40 more, 40 more degrees added to 140 to come up with 180. We're always going back to this horizontal axis. So my reference angle is going to be 40. Now let's check. We have the cosine of 140. All right, so we have a negative 0 0.766. And we can see the cosine of 40 here. And again, why do we have different answers? One's positive, one's negative. That's because the cosines are like x's in quadrant 2. They're negative, but in quadrant 1, they are positive. This is the correct answer. All right, tangent of negative 82. So negative means we're going to drop down. Now, if I go all the way down, we're at 90. I don't want to go quite that far. So this is going to be my reference down here. And I have a tangent of negative 82. And we have an answer of negative 7.1153, depending on how far they want us to, to round here. So negative 7.115 is what Mr. McFarland has provided us in the answer key. Now, what is a reference angle? It means how far back to the horizontal axis, it'd be 82 degrees back. A reference angle will always be positive. All right. Now remember, this is the cosecant. That's the reciprocal of sine. So I'm going to find sine and take one over it to achieve the cosecant. Let's first decide where can I find a negative 115? Well, this is negative 90 and this is negative 180. When we have a negative, we reverse directions. So negative 90, negative 180 is going to be a little bit past that. So somewhere here in quadrant three is where I'm going to find this negative 115. So I'm going to start by taking the sine of negative 115, but it doesn't ask for the sine, it asks for the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of this. And I can copy in that answer without having to round, and I get a final answer here of negative 1.103 approximately. Now what is a reference angle? The reference angles will always be between 0 and 90. So how much further do I have to go to get back up to, to get back up to this degree? So I'm at negative 115, and I want to get to negative 180. So what is the difference? 180 minus 115 is a difference of 65. I need to go additional 65 backwards to get up to this horizontal axis. Let's look at 5, 6, 7, and 8. All right, when I look at number five, I'm looking at 116.3. 
Okay, let's take a look at this unit circle. So here's 90, here's 180, 116. So somewhere in here is going to be my reference angle. And, sorry, it's going to be my angle, excuse me. This is going to be my angle. And then how much more do I have to add to that to come up with 180? So 180, if I have here 180, subtract 116. Oop, I'm messing up here. 116.3. I have a reference angle of 63.7 degrees. 63.7 degrees. Now, in order to do this, remember secant is reciprocal of cosine. So I'm going to take the cosine of 116.3, but to get the secant, I need the reciprocal or one over that amount. So I have negative 2.25. It looks like you rounded to the nearest to the nearest thousandths. All right, cotangent. Let me move this over. All right, let's take a look here at um, number six. We have the cotangent of a, a very precise angle. So the cotangent of 312 degrees, and then this is read as 42 minutes and 15 seconds. Well, I know that, let's see here, I know that this is going to be 0, 90, 180, 270. So it's going to be right in this range, right about here. Well, let's figure out, first of all, what is that reference angle? If I could take 360 and subtract this, I could get the exact reference angle. So I'm going to take 360 and I'm going to subtract this. Now, how do I plug this in? All right, so 360, I start by plugging in 312. Now I need to get the degrees. I believe I can hit math and let me find it. Let me find it here. Oh, well, let's use math test. No, I thought it was math, but I must be wrong. Let me go down and see. Let's go top. No, nope. let me press pause, not waste your. I think I found it here. We need to get second angle. So to get this as a degrees, I'm going to get, I'm taking 36. Subtract this exact measurement of an angle. So second angle, there's degrees, and then we have 45 hours, or 42 hours, so 42. Again, second angle, and number two is going to represent the hour, and then 15 minutes. But you can see when we go second angle, there's not that provided. But if I come down here and I hit alpha, oh, let me go back here. No. Quit. Clear. Quit. Quit. There we go. Let's go all the way down here. All right. If I want to represent this as 15 minutes, I can see down here at the very bottom, we have the two dashes and it's in green. Okay. Now I have 360 subtract. This gives us an exact reference angle and we can see that it's 47 point, um, two nine, 47.29. Five, eight, and so on. Now I'll go back in just a second. I'll turn that back into hours and into minutes for us. Um, but that's what we have. Now let's figure out what would this be in terms of evaluating this trig function. So I'm going to recognize that this is going to be the reciprocal of tangent. So I'm going to go back and figure out if I take away 360 here. So if I go 312, let's get that degrees in. And then we have 42. And 42, let's represent the hour. That's going to be number two. And we have 15, and we'll represent the minute. Okay, so this is the exact part. And I'm going to first take the tangent of this. So tangent of that previous answer. And then cotangent is reciprocal of that. So we have an answer of negative, let's see here, negative 0 0.9229. All right, now let me move this up here. Let's go back and turn this into hours. If I had to refer back to the video really quick to remember, how do I easily take this? Okay, so we have this here, and I want to now take 360. So let's see here. Um, I want to take 360 minus that amount. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. 360 minus this amount. And that gives us the 47 that I showed you, 47.295833. Uh, but if we want to write that in terms of exact hours and minutes, we can go back to second angle, and I can go to, this is our exact time with seconds and minutes. 
pressing enter, and there we have it. So we have exactly, this is 47 um, degrees and 17 hours and 45 minutes. And that's how I'm able to achieve the exact answer for number six. Now, when we look at one through six, it's all in terms of degrees. Now, when I look at the rest, how do I know if it's in terms of radian measurements, radians, or degrees? So we're either going to see a pi symbol that lets us know it's in terms of radians, or if there's no pi symbol, we know it's also in terms of radians. The only way to know it's in terms of degrees if we actually actually see the degree symbol present. So let's look at number seven. Um, put some pause. Okay, so let's first find out approximately where is this. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put some values here. So I know this is at zero. Now this is at pi over two. So I'm going to do pi divided by two. This is approximately 1.7. Over here we have 1 pi, which we know is approximately 3.14. Now here we have 3 pi divided by 2, so 4.71, and this is 2 pi, which is 6.28. All right, so we have those. Okay, so let's figure out approximately where this is. 13 pi divided by 10. Okay, so 4.08. So it looks like it's just before we hit what you want to think about on a graph is that south, the south coordinate, if we think of it as a compass. So just before that, seeing that this is 4.71, so I know this is somewhere right about here. Okay, and now we want to go back to just pi. So we're right here, we need to reverse it back to pi. So I'm going to take this amount, which is 13 um, I'm going to put this on a little tab in case I make a mistake here and do my simple math. Give me one second. Okay, so I'm at 13 pi over 10, and I want to subtract back to pi. So I need a common denominator times 10 and times 10. So 13 pi minus 10 pi is 3 pi over the common denominator of 10. So that's how I'm able to get a reference angle here. This this area back, sorry, this distance back here, this degree measurement is 3 pi over 10. Don't give it to me as a decimal. Now, how do I evaluate this? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a mode. i got to find mode. There's mode. And i got to change it out of degrees and into radians by pressing enter. Now we have the sine of 13 pi divided by 10. And we can see we have an answer of approximately negative 0.809. All right, so let's take a next look at this one. Okay, now notice that is negative, but first I'm going to get an idea here. I have 11, uh, 21 pi divided by 5. So, ooh, 13. Well, I know one time around, one time around is 6. Even if I reverse it, it's 6.2. Now, let's see if I do 4 pi. Since one time around is 2 pi, and two times around would be 4 pi. Okay, so 12, if I go around 12, twice, it's going to be... 12.566 uh, would be two times around. And I can see that 21 pi over 5 is even more than that. So what that tells me is it reverses directions. Here's 1 pi. Here's 2 pi. And after I go around twice, I'm at approximately 12.566. But I have to go further than that, just slightly further than that. So I want to know what is this degrees to get back to the x-axis. I know again that twice around is tw twice around. Excuse me, is four pi, or tw or it's going to think of it as as um, so two pi. Yep, four pi. So I want to know if I take what I'm given, which is well, it doesn't matter which way we go here, but we have twenty one pi, twenty one pi over five, and I want to go back to four pi, which is two revolutions. Now I need to find a good common denominator, so times five times five. And I have 21 pi over 5 minus 20 pi over 5. And when I subtract, I get 1 pi over 5. So my reference angle is 1 pi over 5. Now, how do I evaluate this? I'm already in radians. So I'm going to do tangent of negative 21 pi divided by 5. And now let's round this here to the nearest thousands. Negative 0 0.72. 
we can either leave it as a 6 or we can round it up to a 7. All right, let's look at 9, 10, 11, and 12. All right, let's figure out what is the value of 21 pi over 8. So, well, no, battery don't go on me. 21 pi divided by 8. Oops, sorry. 21 pi divided by 8. Okay, that gives me a value of 8.2 something. Okay, so 1 revolution, 1 revolution is a value of 6.8. This, this is slightly more than 6.8. Now I want to know 6.28 plus 1.75. That means it'd be one revolution plus another fourth. Would give me 7.85. 7.85. And notice I'm looking for eight something. So what does that tell me? It tells me it's somewhere here in quadrant three because if I did 8.2, uh, 8.28, that's one revolution or two pi plus 3.14, I would see it can be far more than that. So if I go one and a half times around and stop right here, it'd be 8.42, or sorry, it'd be 9.42, and 8.24 is in between here. It's in between 7.85 and in between 9.42. So what does that mean? It's going all the way around once and then stopping over here somewhere. Okay, so I need to know how much more do I need to go down until I hit until I hit this line? Well, what would that be? That would be two pi plus an additional pi. So I want to get all the way down to three pi again. This is two pi plus an additional pi is three pi. And right now I'm at 21 pi over eight. So if I subtract these, I'll figure out what is this difference in degrees. Let's get a common denominator times eight times eight. I have 24, oops, forgot the 4 there, 24 pi over 8 minus 21 pi over 8. And then when I subtract the numerators, I end up with 3 pi over 8. All right, that's my reference angle. <clears throat> now, how do I evaluate this? I'm going to go cosine of 21 pi divided by 8. And there's my answer, a negative 0.3826. All right, so now we have the cosecant. Okay, 2.5. Let's go back and look at my circle. Where is 2.5? Well, 2.5 also is going to be in this area. So 2.5 is going to be somewhere in here. How do I know that? Because pi over 2 is equivalent to 1.75, and 1 pi is equivalent to 3.14. 2.5 is in between them. All right, let's figure out the reference angle. How do I do the reference angle for this? Let me grab this, a clear line. To figure out the reference angle, I'm going to take 1 pi and I'm going to subtract it from 2.5. So let's do that. Pi subtract 2.5. This is my reference angle, so it's 0 0.64, 0 0.64 approximately. Reference angle 0 0.6415. That's approximate. And now let's figure out what this is. Cosecant is going to be um, is going to be the reciprocal of sine. So I'm going to take the sine of 2.5, and then I'm going to take a reciprocal of that exact answer to get 1.6709. 1.6709. All right, let's do cotangent. Now I have 3.6. I'm going to come back here. 3.6. Okay, here's 0, 1.5. Ooh, so 3.14 or pi would be here. It's just slightly past that, just slightly past that. And I want to figure out how much do I have to go up until I could hit the pi. So I want to take and take 3.648 and I want to subtract it from pi, which is approximately 3.14, but we want to do exact. That will give me that reference angle. And we can see we have a reference angle, angle of approximately 0 0.5064. Okay, now this is going to be a reciprocal of tangent. So let's take tangent of 3.648. And then let's take the reciprocal of that answer. And I have 1.8029. All right, so negative 5. Let's only worry about 5 right now. 
So one time around, one time around is 6.4. So five, just thinking about it as a positive, five is in between 4.7 and 6.28. But it's not a positive. So instead of going here and landing in quadrant four, it's going to reverse it and land it somewhere in quadrant one. And now we can figure out exactly what is a reference angle. Let me pull up a piece of paper here. We can figure out the reference angles. I want to know how much more do I have to get to get to this 2 pi mark? Even though it's negative, it's still a distance of 2 pi. The negative part just tells us the reverse directions. So if I take 2 pi and I subtract 5, I'm going to be able to figure out what is this reference angle. So 2 pi subtract 5 gives us an answer of approximately 1.2831. Okay, secant is reciprocal of cosine, so cosine of negative 5, and then take the reciprocal of that to get approximately 3.5253.